Thank you, Madam Chair. Nice to see all of you back after a heavy lunch. So <laughs> it's usually very difficult to present a paper after lunch, but I, I'm going to try my best. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> a lot has been said about uh, the convention on the elimination of, of, uh, of, I mean, the third, the third uh, convention on the elimination of ra uh, racial and uh, uh, racial. What are you? Yeah, the third. Uh, but I'm going to touch on something with regards to the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. Vis-a-vis yeah? uh, -vis the rights of my, my minorities and the position in Malaysia. Right? They, they also, they, they also call something, some, sorry, something called EIC rights, which are basically rights related to uh, lab, uh, labor, rights to health, right to housing, and the right to education, and the right to food, and also cultural rights. Right? That these are rights which are often forgotten. Yeah? Because most, most of the time, when you talk about uh, human rights, people concentrate on civil and political rights. Yeah? There's not much emphasis on uh, uh, right to food, for example, yeah? or cultural rights. Yeah? So these are rights which are very closely related to minorities in, in, uh, in any country. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> if you take Malaysia, for example, you will know that uh, uh, there's been much controversy about the implementation of Article 153 of the Federal Constitution, okay, which, provides, uh, which provides affirmative action for the majority of women putra races in this country. Right? Uh, <coughs> but if you look at it on a, if you, if you look at it on a, on a, from, a, from a different viewpoint, the implement, the, most, most of the time the problem with regards to Article 153 is with its implementation. Yeah? If you look at Article 153, a lot of uh, questionable policies have been made by, this, by, by the authorities and they justify it by saying that it comes under Article 153. Now let me just give you some examples. Uh, but before that, let me just uh, highlight to you what, is Article 153, what, what Article 153 is all about. Now Article 153 provides for the reservation of quotas <coughs> mainly in the areas of one, positions in the public service, Two, scholarships, educational or training privileges or special facilities. Three, permits or, permits or licenses for the operation of any trade. Okay? And <clears throat> these are basically reserved for the majority uh, Bumiputra races in, in this country. Yeah? Right? But <clears throat> also in Article 153, also, there is also a qualification when it says that it shall be the responsibility of the young Diputar Ago to safeguard the special position of the Malays and the natives of Sabah and Sarawak and, and the legitimate interests of other communities. Now this phrase, the legitimate interests of other communities, is often forgotten. Right? When, <coughs> when policies are implemented under the guise of Article 153, they just concentrate on this, oh, uh, we, can, we can introduce any uh, policies which favor the Bumiputra because Article 153 provides for it. But often, Article 153 has a qualification and the qualification is the legitimate interests of other communities must be protected. Right? And this is, this is uh, contained in the Constitution. You can't run away from that. Right? Now, <coughs> the phrase uh, legitimate interests of other communities means that it does not allow simply any kind of uh, preferential treatment in favor of the Bumi Putra. Okay? It's not, it is not, you can't say, it's not a blank check. Okay? It's not a blank check where you can just give anything and everything uh, to all and sundry. Yeah? But it merely confers limited powers on the government and parliament pursuant to Article 53 to derogate from the principle of equality and equal protection. There is only a limited power. It's only a limited power. Okay? So basically the problem lies with its implementation, not Article 153 by itself. If, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you look at Article 153 and how it's been implemented, <coughs> for example, Article 153 provides for quotas only for the issuance of permits and licenses to bring trust. However, even government commercial contracts have been awarded solely to women's companies. Okay? Which is clearly not sanctioned under the federal constitution. Even government, leak con even government GLCs, GLCs you, you, you might know about, you might have heard of TNB and MAS and all that, yeah? and other statutory bodies assign their work solely to Bumutra companies. Some major banks assi assign their legal work solely to Bumutra legal firms. You see? So this, uh, this is a situation where it is actually not in accordance with the federal constitution particularly Article, Article 153, yeah? 
even if you look at uh, uh, private companies, right? The constitution only talks about reservation of quotas in the public service. That means the civil service. Yeah? But ethnic quotas are also imposed on private companies by government agencies, and licensing is used as a way to get private companies to observe Bumiputra quotas. Right? If you look at if you if you go to an insurance company, there's I think insurance company has got a 30% uh, Bumiputra quota where they have to recruit 30% uh putra into the company if not they're asking for trouble they're, they're, the license might be, might be revoked you see so these are some 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 issues which are which are clearly not sectioned by the federal constitution but yet it continues to happen right in malaysia you don't have uh, there's not been many cases challenging uh, there's not been a single case challenging article 153 right so that's why we uh, the fed i mean the courts have not been uh, been given, been given an opportunity to actually uh, ventilate or to thresh out the applicability or the, the scope of Article 153. Yeah? Maybe, I mean, I don't know. After this, there might be some. After this seminar, uh, hopefully. Yeah? The lack of job opportunities in the public sector for the non-Pumitra, mainly uh, people from Chinese and Indian origin, is a glaring example of an unreasonable application of affirmative action policies. It's very clear. Yeah? And to make things worse, under the federal constitution, you have Article 136, which provides for the impartiality, which provides for impartiality in the public sector. And Article 136 of the federal constitution is often forgotten. Every civil servant must be treated impartially. You see, but what, what is happening now, you find that many non trusts in the various government departments have complained that they have been deprived of promotions, they have been sidelined in favor of Bumiputra candidates. I mean, it's uh, it's open secret. Everyone knows about it. I think Mr. Mr. John can clearly testify, I mean, can, can clearly affirm that. <laughs> yeah? But in the Constitution, there's a clear provision saying that there must be impartiality in the civil service. But who is following it? Yeah? So it, the Constitution provides these things, but yet it's not been followed. Yeah? Another issue is the public universities. Recently, you will find that uh, in July of this year, uh, there were many complaints by non mubutra students that they've been uh, denied entry into the into Malaysian public universities, although they have uh, high-flying results. Yeah, and, uh, <coughs> and this year there were 41,573 applicants who were successful in getting entry into public universities in Malaysia. A staggering 74.3 percent were mubutra applicants. You see. Year after year, only non bumiputra students complain about not being, gain, not being able to gain entry into public universities, despite having achieved very good results. See, what, what, so what does this tell you? The system is riddled with racial bias. How do you explain 74.3% bumiputra applicants being uh, successful? What is the criteria? We don't know, because we don't have a Freedom of Information Act in Malaysia. We can't find out what is the criteria are you following. How do you base your, your selection process? What do, you base, what do you base your selection process on? We don't know because we don't have a FYI uh, law in this country. Yeah? So, looking at this, the perception that is created that the system itself is riddled with racial bias. Right? And who, who, who actually, who actually uh, loses from all this? Who is the, 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 the loser at the end of the day? It's, it's, the, it's our own country. Because these students will be taken away by universities from Taiwan, Singapore, the UK, the US. And they, end up, and they end up working there and they end up settling down there. So we lose a good pool, a good pool of uh, talented students to other countries. You see? So the, the brain drain that results from this is damaging the country. And people realize that, but the government realizes that, but nothing uh, substantive has been done, is being done to address this issue. Year after year, we still hear complaints of non bumiputra students being denied entry into universities, although they have uh, 4.0 CGPA, which is Perfect. It's the perfect results. You see? So the, this, these are issues which, uh, which actually remind me of the one Singhala policy you know, that was uh, created by the Singhalese government in Sri Lanka. I don't know whether, Mr. Richa, I don't know whether you remember that. You know, that, that, that one Singhala policy, which is the, one, is the one that triggered the racial strife in Sri Lanka between the Tamils and the Singhalese. You see, because they couldn't, they, it came to a level where they just couldn't take the discrimination. Okay. 
So I think, I don't know whether, whether we, are, we are there or we are heading towards that, but if nothing is being done to stop this, we might head towards that. Yeah? And another example I'll give you, I'll give you another example, which is another uh, uh, staggering, uh, or staggering revelation. Eh? Local authority contracts, licenses and permits. I'm an MPPJ, I'm a counsellor, right? If you, if, you, if you need to bid for a job in, uh, say, say uh, to, to build, to build uh, a drain or to, to put street lights, right, you need to have something called Class F license. Yeah? And this Class F license is only issued to Bumiputra contractors. And I did, I did some research on this and I found, uh, I got this piece of information from the Penang Economic Monthly, right? There are, as of 2005, uh, this is 2005, there were 42,313 42, registered contractors in Malaysia. Right? Interestingly, 35,253 of the total mentioned are Class F Bumiputra contractors. This, this basically means that a staggering 83% of four out of five contractors are Bumiputra contractors from the Class F category. Therefore, all government requirements valued below 200,000 is essentially a Bumitra affair. You see? So if this is not uh, a race-based policy or racial discrimination, I don't know what is. Right? And, you, and, you, and, you see the, and you see the effects of this. Right? Uh, issuing these licenses to one particular race, you see the effects. Because the guys who get these uh, contracts with these Class F uh, licenses, they actually, they actually uh, rent it out. They tender it to somebody else. And that guy inflates the prices yeah, to, so, so that he can pay the, the person he took the contract from. Right? And when he inflates the prices, he, to, he has to cut costs. So he cuts costs on materials. He cuts costs on labor. He takes unsealed workers. Yeah? And well, what is the result? The result you see that stadium roofs, uh, stadium roofs are collapsing, hospitals are leaking. Even the court plaza in Jalan Duta was leaking a couple of uh, months ago. Yeah, so th th this is the, the result, you see? So the thing is, why can't we open up? Why can't we open up uh, these things to all? To all contractors that are qualified, so that they don't have to play around with this uh, infl uh, inf inflation, I mean, inflating the prices, right? They don't have to play around with things like that. They can just do the job, complete the job, and, and, they, and they actually do a good job. We don't want a shoddy job. But right now, what is happening is this. Right? I mean, we hear about it, we read about it almost every month in the, in the newspapers, right? About some hospital leaking, yeah? Some schools not completed because the contractor ran away, right? Even the court plaza in Clank is not completed yet because the contractor ran away. <laughs> Class F contractor. Yeah, he, I think maybe he couldn't get his payment from the, the subcontractor, so says the subcontractor ran away. You see? So this is, is an issue which is affecting the country, but, you know, there seems to be no political will to actually address this very important issue, right? So those are some uh, uh, examples uh, which, are, which, are, which I have uh, highlighted. And if you need to read more, I have actually published a book called Equality for, Law, uh, Equality for All, and uh, more details can be found in this book. Yeah? So what I'm trying to say is that uh, Affirmative action is something that, that must be on a need-based uh, criteria, right? For those who need it, it, it must be only given to those who need it, right? And we can, we can actually uh, gauge who, who actually needs it. There are, there are, there are, there are people from, uh, from, the, from the kampongs, from the villages, right? They need it, right? There are people from the low-cost housing colony. If you go to Desamantari, Right? I, I, I used to do some programs there. This I'm telling you, the, the, the situation there is so bad, right? And you have Malays, you have Chinese, you have Indians, all living in a cooped up in a small apartment, right? And they're all stricken by poverty, right? So it should be given to deserving candidates, right? And I'm not talking about quotas, right? I'm not talking about quotas. Quotas actually is, uh, is a foregone conclusion. It, it does more damage than good. I'm talking about poverty eradication programs, right? Like affordable housing. Right? Clothing, food, educational loans, business loans, right? Something like what uh, uh, this guy in Bangladesh did, right? The, the Grameen Bank, you know, something like that, right? 
this, 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 are, this are what we are talking about, but, but uh, we just cannot give uh, uh, special preferential treatment or special treatment to all and sundry just like that, right? For example, why, why does a rich Malay need uh, affirmative action? Why does a middle class Wimputra need affirmative action? He doesn't need it. The thousands of uh, poor Malays, you can see them, you go to, if you go to Lumpa Sumba, if you go to Dema Desa Mantari, you can see them. They can't afford one meal a day. There are people like that. Yeah? So, <clears throat> the thing is, what I'm trying to say is that we need to have a strong law so that we can check discriminatory policies in this country. And the only way to do that is to have a race relations act. Yeah? A strong race relations, uh, independent race relations com commission, which can put an end to all these administrative uh, distributive policies uh, made by government agencies, class F uh, licenses, and just so many other things. For example, I, I can also tell you one, I can also give you another example. This I got from a teacher. Uh, of course, I can't reveal the name of the person in which school. Yeah? This was a debating competition <laughs> organized by the school, and there was a circular by the Ministry of Education Malaysia. This is the back of my book. Each team should comprise of at least one Bumiputra student one Bumiputra student, in bracket, according to Article 153 of the Persian Constitution. <laughs> Can you believe it? I mean, when I, when, I, when I read this, I became sick. I actually became sick. <laughs> so how are you going to promote competition in, among students in schools? You're already creating a divide. Oh, uh, so what, I mean, you're already creating a big divide, Bumiputra and non-Bumiputra. So what does a child uh, learn from that? Oh, why am I being discriminated? Why am I... I thought, I mean, I, I was doing well, but somebody has taken my place, a women trust student. You, see, you have policies like this. This actually, is actually a circular for the Ministry of Education Malaysia. You see? So a race relations commission can actually get down to work and pick up these things. I never knew about this until this teacher gave it to me. I'm sure there's thousands of uh, administrative instructions, policies like this, going around many uh, government agencies that we don't know about. So a race relations commission under a race relations act can actually act on this right, to, to ensure that uh, racially biased policies are, are, are taken out from this country so that we can move forward. Thank you.